Hello everyone, Jeff here. So for the past month, I've been working on the skill grid and character progression. Now I'm a little bit further behind where I wanted to be. It's unfortunately just been a busy couple of weeks for my work schedule, but I have been making some good progress and added some interesting features to Intelia. So let's go ahead and take a look. So as you'll recall from the previous video, one of the things I've been working on is getting equipment to equip into the character's hand slots and visually appear to be equipped on the character. So as you can see, I've got a few more of these working. I've still got a, quite a few of them to go. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna equip an ax and I wanna talk about the next point. So as you can see, I have the wood ax in my hand here. And what I've been working on lately is the use of tools. In the Intelia MMO, to do something like fishing, what you'd have to do is equip the fishing pole in your uh, inventory slide, equip it on the character, and then you would activate a skill such as uh, short cast, jig, drag, and those would do different things. Now with this, until you, I'm doing things a little bit differently in that when you equip something like an ax or a fishing pole, by simply using the associated uh, mouse button, or if you're using a gamepad, you know, the trigger, whatever, by using the item in that hand, you'll be able to do things directly with that object without actually needing a skill associated with that object. So the next thing I'm trying to do here is get it so that when I swing the ax, there's actually a collision detector on the ax head, and it'll actually detect the moment that the ax head hits something like, say, a tree. I don't have this working yet, this is something I'm working on. And so the big thing that kind of came up this week is how are we gonna do that? Originally, I had planned on using just simple ray collisions to do that, but I really think that's kind of going a little bit too far down a road that we know isn't the right way. So instead, yesterday, I started spending a lot of work getting physics working in the game again. So let's go ahead and take a, a quick look at that. So this here is the physics visual debugger. It's made by NVIDIA. And this allows me to see what's happening in our collision scene as it happens. It's a real time, so I can move the character around and immediately see changes. I can't do it very easily while capturing a video, but you get the idea. I can visually watch what's going on in the physics scene as I do this. So obviously I've got quite a bit of the physics scene loaded. I've got terrain loading, I've got trees loading, I got the character back. Uh, getting physics back in the game is a big, big advantage for us for a number of reasons. It allows us to walk around in buildings, we can stop walking through trees, it'll prevent that. Uh, it'll help us when it comes time to doing acrobatic stuff, uh, walking on top of things like uh, docks and bridges, as well as uh, making sure we don't just walk straight up steep terrain, we start sliding down terrain and etc. So lots of great reasons to have physics back in the game. I'm really looking forward to it. And I've been putting a lot of work over the last 24 hours uh, getting physics working again. And I, I originally figured, I, th I thought I was going to do a bit of a programming video today where I actually work on the physics, try to get this collider on the ax head to hit the tree and raise events so that we can start handling that. Unfortunately, as I've started to learn, especially in the last four hours or so that I've been programming, physics programming is extremely tedious. I've run into some major bugs, not really bugs, just things I didn't know about physics as far as uh, rotational matrix and quaternions needing to be identity or need to be normalized and stuff. So I've just run into things that have taken several hours to figure out and I don't think that would make a very good programming stream watching me scratch my head over why isn't this rotation working correctly. So I'll continue to work on that today. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I think this ax swinging mechanic is actually good, not just ax swinging, but just tool swinging mechanic. Uh, having colliders and responding to collisions is a much better way to go than what we were using in the MMO. Uh, in the MMO, when we'd cut down a tree or you know do something like uh, using the mine, the mining pick, what it was really doing was just picking whatever object was directly in front of the character with a quick little test to try and find something in front of the character. And then when you activated the action, it would just do the calculations. What I'd like to do now instead is on every single frame of this animation, as the axe head swings through the air, I'm going to be moving a collider through the air and on the exact frame that it hits the tree, I want to stop the animation. And at that point we can determine, okay, we hit a tree or we hit something else. And we can play a sound, a particle effect. If we hit the tree, we'll probably do something like a wood hitting sound. And we'll probably pause the animation briefly and then go back to normal position. If we hit something that's not a tree, we'll probably do something like reverse the animation, kind of make it look like the, the ax head is bouncing, like we're kind of bouncing off the object play a different sound, 
and have a different effect. So I think that's going to be a pretty big improvement for Intellia actually using collisions to determine uh, what's been hit. And it also allows us to do some other interesting things, such as if this axe head hits, say, a creature, we could actually have it do a little bit of damage. And we've been talking quite a bit about this. If we have maybe NPCs in a field somewhere, they might use something like a scythe to uh, harvest grain. And I think it's kind of cool if the NPCs could kind of defend themselves if something like an Ichi comes along. They can use whatever tool ha they have in their hand to kind of briefly defend themselves and maybe run away or something. So a lot of cool stuff going on. I'm really excited about this like a collision kind of thing that we're actually using the exact thing we collide with rather than just kind of guessing based on what's in front of the player. And I think it'll come in handy when it comes to things like shooting arrows and stuff as well. So quite a bit of work going on, but it's very technical, not very much fun to try and explain so I'm just gonna keep working on it, and I'm trying to get this done in time for the next developers meeting, which will be in about a week. Uh, I'm really kind of running out of time on this, but I'm trying to get this as far as long as I can because we have more plans for next month, what we, what we need to be doing, so. So that's gonna do it for this week's update. I hope you enjoyed. As always, if you had any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. I really appreciate all the feedback I got in the last video about the tapey bloodlines and the character creation options. Really good suggestions. And I'm trying to bring those on board and we're coming up with some good ideas. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time. Take care. A special thanks goes to this month's Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the project, you can do so by visiting www.patreon.com slash